Hi, I'm Dan. Have you ever thought about how you're impacted by what others think of you? We're all shaped by the world that we live in. But as Christians, we should care more about what God thinks than what others think. Let's see what we can learn from today's God story. Here's BB dressed as a bumblebee for Halloween. She looks so happy. Hey everyone, Liza here, glad to be back with you this week. I wanted to start today by sharing a story with you about a time when I was a kid and I was invited to go to the fair with my friend and her family. And before leaving, my mom gave me $30 and she let me know that a part of the money could be used for dinner and whatever was left over was for emergency purposes only. And so that was a lot of money for a kid to have. But I went and we had a great time. I went for dinner, maybe I spent like 10 bucks, still had like 20 bucks left over. And then we sort of made our way through the fair over to the shopping area and we went up to this one booth that was selling this nail polish kit and my friend really wanted it and she asked her mom and the mom said okay and she was so excited and she turned to me and she said Liza like you've got money you should get the kit too and I sort of was thinking to myself oh no like I know my mom said emergency only and I was looking down at the money in my one hand and the nail kit over there and then I I did it and I bought the nail kit. And for about 30 seconds, I felt really great as we jumped up and down in the air with our nail polish shouting, yay, twinsies. But then immediately after, I had this sort of sick guilt feeling in my stomach because I knew I made a decision that wasn't right. Have you ever spent time thinking or worrying about what other people think of you? Like maybe there's a friend at school who you think is really cool and you really wanna try to impress. Hello. But the truth is what other people think of us is so much less important than what God thinks of us. In fact, we should care more about what God wants and thinks for us than anyone else because God created us and he loves us more than anyone in the world. And so his hopes for you, his way, his opinion, it should matter most. And he knows what he's created for you. And that leads me to this week's big idea. When we live for Jesus, we care more about what God thinks than what people think. In this series, we've been checking out the book of James in the New Testament of the Bible. James writes to Christ followers all over the world, encouraging them to actually live as Christ followers and not just talk about it. He also warns them and encourages them and us that what we say impacts all of who we are. Let's check out James 4, starting at verse four. Don't you know that to be a friend of the world is to hate God? So anyone who chooses to be the world's friend becomes God's enemy. Okay, let's just pause for a second there. James isn't saying that we can't be friends with people who aren't Christ followers. What he's saying is that we shouldn't get cozy, cozy with the things of the world or the spirit of the world, the things that the world values, the things that aren't God's best. So like greed or jealousy or pride. He goes on to write, God opposes those who are proud, but he gives grace to those who are not. Remember, God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom. The weak are made strong, the poor are rich. God gives grace to those who are humble, not to the proud. So obey God, stand up to the devil, he will run away from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. So James says that we should obey God. You know sometimes when you don't listen to your parents and you get hurt or you get in trouble, kind of like me when I spent the money when I shouldn't have, well, it's the same with God. God wants us to obey him because God knows what is best. We need him. God, the creator, great love, Lord, ruler. He knows what's best for us and he wants us to follow his way. The closer we move to God, the further away we are from the things that aren't good for us. And the closer we move to him, the closer he moves to us. James goes on to say, my brothers and sisters, don't speak against one another. Anyone who speaks against another believer speaks against the law and anyone who judges another believer judges the law. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it. Instead, you are acting as if you were its judge. In other words, don't judge each other and don't be mean to each other. That's not God's best way for us. So what does this all mean for us? It means that when we focus on God and when we draw near to him, the things that seem to matter now will fade away and the really important stuff will be made known. God's love for us and his desire for you to love others and your value in the world. When we live for Jesus, part of getting to know him is seeing how much he cares about his connection with the Father. His only focus on earth was to do what the Father had asked him to do. And if we want to follow Jesus, and really walk in his footsteps, then our first thought and our last thought should always be about what God wants for us to do, his desires for us. 
And that's why when we live for Jesus, we care more what God thinks than what people think. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out this week. My name's Liza. It's been a blast. See you next week. Turn to the person next to you and answer the following question before the time runs out. Question time. What are different ways that we can learn about what God thinks and how he wants us to act? What are some things you already know about God? So caring about what God thinks doesn't mean that we ignore people who aren't Jesus followers. It just means that we model our lives after Jesus and live our lives in such a way that people will be drawn to that. Let's watch this story where Clara chose to do what she felt God told her to do, even though it made her do things a little bit differently. Watch this. Here's my pet family. There's Judah, who's four, there's Sally, who's eight, and there's Elsa and Oliver, who are two and a half, and their brother and sister. I'm Clara, and I like hanging out with my family and my friends, and I like playing piano and guitar. Before I joined a band, I would play a lot more of worship music, and I wrote my own worship song. So it was about three years ago, and we were going costume shopping for Halloween, and there was just a lot of scary costumes, and in my family, we don't dress up scary. I just felt like I was being told by God not to dress up. So the church I was visiting, they were giving out papers that you could hand out just inviting people to church. So instead of trick-or-treating, I handed those out with some candy. The last two years, I've just been making my own cards saying like, Jesus loves you, or no matter what's happening, Jesus still loves you, or whatever. And I'll put little candies on there, and then I'll usually put it in a basket and then go hand it out. Usually when I hand it out, they're very surprised that I'm handing something out instead of like trick-or-treating and asking for candy. One time, this lady gave me a hug. I think it's just a good way to show Jesus' love and give back. For me, it's just more important to do what God thinks is best for me and what God wants me to do rather than what my friends think is good. Question time. What changes can you make in your life to break free from what others think of you? What things do you do that show that you care about what God thinks? There are different ways of thinking when it comes to Halloween, and that goes for a lot of things in life. Clara didn't make a judgment call on what other people choose to do. She chose to do what she felt God was telling her to do, and she's a great example of someone who cares more about what God thinks than what others think. Let's break up into our small groups and see what this looks like in our own story. <laughs> 